Good day all, D Christopher here from Penguin Magic and you are watching P3 TV. Let's take a quick look at what's coming up in today's show. First up, Josh is going to talk to us about a brilliant mentalism effect from Richard Osterlund, then we'll hear some wisdom from the most popular magician in Asia, Lu Chen, and finally we'll watch the charred shark at work performing a new trick just released today. Another fun-filled show with something for everyone, so let's head straight over to Josh and see what his recommendation is this week. Hello everybody, Josh Birch here. Today I'd like to talk about Predict Tech Toe, as created by Richard Osterlund and presented by uh, Simone Turkington. This is a wonderful effect that allows you to predict the outcome of a game of tic-tac-toe. You don't have to add in any extra rules or anything like that. You just play a normal game of uh, tic-tac-toe, X's and O's or uh, knots and crosses, and you're able to predict the outcome of that game every single time without fail. So uh, this is the type of effect that you can perform for a close-up gig for friends at a party or at a, uh, at a bar or just socially like that. But it's the kind of thing that I have used in my one-man stand-up magic show. And I performed it for groups of several hundred people in large auditoriums. Uh, and today, if you download Predict Act Toe, as presented by uh, Simone Turkington, uh, you will get, I will offer, I will share with you my version of the effect that I would use for a larger audience. I think if you are a professional mentalist and uh, you want to perform this type of effect, it's super relatable, it has kind of a built-in nostalgia factor, then I think that this will be super helpful to you. It'll also be helpful to anyone who is maybe a teacher or a presenter uh, that you can get up on stage and you can perform this. I used to teach uh, high school French classes and uh, this is the type of effect that I would pull out on a rainy day or after school uh, where I could write down a prediction on the blackboard and then we could play our game with tic-tac-toe and it would match that prediction. So it's a very versatile effect. Also, if you, can, if you want to continue to just perform this as a close-up effect, then I offer a couple little subtleties that I think that you'll really find helpful. So if you want to perform mentalism anytime, anywhere, this is the perfect effect for you. If you learn it today, then uh, it's the type of effect that you could perform for the rest of your life. So go pick up Predict Tech Toe. A brilliant effect, and if you buy it from Penguin Magic right now, you will get that supplement added for free directly into your My Penguin Magic account. A little while ago, a hand-picked selection of the team from Columbus came over to visit me armed with cameras and a selection of the most popular magicians in the world. We all went to the magic circle, we opened the doors to the public and filmed some incredible live shows and in-depth live lectures. One of the most popular lectures that we shot was performed by none other than Asia's most famous magician, Lu Chen. He presented an array of baffling magic and also gave us a bunch of his wisdom from his many, many years of being at the top of his game. So let's take a quick look at a small sample of what Lu had to share with us. Precision is important, mm -hmm. but method for me is the fundamental element of the magic show. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, also another thing I not very agree, and I don't read someone talk about this before is people say we need to shift the focus from the puzzle, right? Because we don't we don't want people to think magic is possible. We don't want that care about the secret. We want to enjoy the astonishment and amazement and the dream and <laughs> miracle. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's right. Because without puzzle, it will not be miracle. I have seen some very good magic shows, so touching, so emotional, so good, and people, no one care about how magicians do the, the, the effect. They just, oh, it's so emotional, so beautiful, but if they don't care about how did he do that, they don't care about the miracle. Mm -hmm. They care about the story, they, they feel it's touching, they feel, the, the drama is good, everything beautiful, blah, 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 but they don't feel the miracle. 
Because miracle happen in their mind, how to happen in their mind? When they see the effect, they start to figure out how what happened here, right? They found try to find a solution. Maybe in one second, they found all the solution, then they all don't work. Then they have conclusion. They're like, okay, this is miracle. Yeah. So if you don't have these processes in their mind, they just don't care. I don't care the secret. Then you don't have the conclusion mm -hmm. to make you think it's miracle. Yeah, it's really it's really a challenge because because uh, I, I believe in in both uh, of, of those things. You know, in 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 trying to have a presentation that that sort of takes people away from figuring things out, but also to have a method that if they're examining it, that they can't. That, you know that, and it's hard to. It, it's it's all about how good that magician is for me, mm -hmm. because. Of course, I'm not talking about to present the magic as a puzzle. Of course not. I mean, you need the element of the puzzle. You need the taste, yeah. puzzle taste, because you need make people have the conclusion in their mind. Now, this is something impossible. Impossible. Yeah. They have this conclusion, they give up. They say, okay, they have conclusion. Yeah. If they treat this as a puzzle, okay, I can figure it out because it can be like this, can be like that, means this is not a good performance. Mm, because right, they have right. so many solutions there, they just don't know which one is the right one. So now it's real puzzle now. Yeah. Because you have a way out, maybe many ways out. So now it's no magic anymore. So you need yeah, to it's the first time I've heard that distinction, and I absolutely love that because because I you know I think many of us like we like puzzles, we like solving them. One of the things that attracts us as magicians is that we get to learn about these solutions to to these puzzling ideas. But yeah. they're not really puzzles, are they? When yeah. they're when they're when they're done right, there's no hint that there is a solution. It's exactly. presented an impossibility. And I, I think this theory can be can be applied in different way. Mm -hmm. For example, this really influenced my work in my early career of my TV show. So I, my style, my previous style was just do a one simple trick, mm -hmm. but make this like very important. Why it's important? Because when, just before I do the trick, for example, I borrow a finger ring and I expect it to choose an egg. Then I say, I'm going to put this ring in an egg. But before I do that, I need to mention something. You choose the egg. You check the egg. The ring's yours. My sleeve rolled up. You are not stooges. The camera was one shot. In this condition, I give the condition. Sure. Yeah. Before I do the get, trick. Get rid, of, get rid of all solutions before it happens. That's yeah. no longer a puzzle. It, it's yeah. similar like a, like a Thomas Ritz magic way, but it's different. Mm -hmm. Because the purpose I give this condition is I'm forcing them to give the conclusion. Mm -hmm. If this happened, that will be a miracle. I force them to give the conclusion yeah. before the trick happened. So now I said, yeah, the sleeve rolled out, the, the egg is no problem, the ring is my ring, blah, 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 blah. And that's if I can put a ring in egg, you have to admit this will be a miracle, <laughs> right? Yeah. Of course. And he will tell himself, yeah, this will be a miracle. Doom! You have no choice to. <laughs> Sure, sure. Right? So this is one way to use this principle. Another way is when we see some mentalism and uh, some people try to use some psychology taste, some mm -hmm. pseudo Oh, sure, the, the, the idea of influencing or yeah, reading yeah, body yeah. language or, you know, the, yeah. yeah, sure. I sometimes I don't think it's the right thing to say. It's the right thing to do mm -hmm. if you really want people to feel or believe that. For example, this is something I'm going to do, but well, let, let me explain. Many mentalists are struggling. Maybe they don't struggle, maybe just I struggle. <laughs> when they do the mind reading show, they ask someone to write down something like that, bid it. Yeah. The justification of that. Uh, they struggled for why? Yeah, yeah. If a real mind reader would not ask someone to write down because you can read mind, something like that. Sure. And, uh, you know, some famous justification like uh, uh, you write down so you will not change your mind, make me look stupid, or, or I don't want people to think you play along so you need to write down or something like that. Mm -hmm. Never convince me. I mean, I never feel right. So what I do is 
I need you write down because I'm going to secretly peek. Mm -hmm. But you will keep the, uh, the paper and put in the envelope. But somehow, I'm going to peek. Now, it's in impos impossible condition. Yeah. So they know I'm holding the paper. So you can't peek. So if you really know, it's impossible peeking. Yeah. It's impossible. <laughs> so it must be psychology. Yeah, I, 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 I love that Or influence or micro impression or I don't care. Now they believe that. Yeah. What do you want to sell? Very, very much so because, because sometimes uh, our, our most uh, treasured methods are, are pretty silly. <laughs> you know, yeah. and when we put them out there boldly like that, audiences go, "No, that's not how it's done. It can't. It can't be." So there you have it—a really interesting perspective from a really incredible magician. Lou actually performed possibly one of the most baffling card tricks I have ever seen in my life uh, during this live show that was alongside his lecture, and it's worth the price of the lecture by itself. It is definitely worth checking out and you can do so at Penguin Magic right now. From one card effect to another, we're now gonna check out a brand new release that just came out today from my friend Daniel Chard, who is an incredible card worker from right here in the UK. We've worked together a bunch of times and he gets killer reactions. This is Delete by Daniel Chard to finish off today's show. This is one of my favorite tricks, right? So magicians all have kind of like, areas of magic that they're really interested in. I, I collect four ice tricks. <laughs> it's a cheap hobby, right? So in this case, these are the um, four aces. I put these on top, just ready. When you check those out, make sure they are what they appear to be. I don't know what you're looking for, but it just makes me... <laughs> but you know there's nothing wrong. Yeah, you know there's nothing, there's nothing wrong there, right? So we have the aces. We have the four aces here. I'll show you, I want this to be extremely clear. Four aces, you can see them front and back, right? So all I do at this point, imagine I tell your brain we can make one of them vanish. So did that really just happen? Okay. We're now left with one, two, and three. It's cool, right? Now we'll do the same thing again. So you have the clubs, diamonds and spades. You have the one, two, three, things like this. So you can still see cards front and back. If I make one of the cards vanish, this time we're left with just the diamonds and clubs. <laughs> Now we'll do, the same, we'll do the same thing again, watch. This time I take these two. Okay. You're gonna see this happen, watch. Everything happens extremely slow, so we have two, yes? Mm -hmm. If I made one of them vanish, we'd be left with one, yeah? Yes. After this, gone. And we're left with just a single card. Yeah. Now the cool part about this is, watch, if I we'll do this, I'll do this like this. If I take the card, it's gonna vanish, all right? So the aces have completely vanished from the deck. I wanna show you again, so there's no front and back. I'm going to show you, don't just take my word for it, can you see any aces there? No? Can you see any aces here? Oh, we can. <laughs> just no. like, so this is real! <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> Again, watch, I want this to be extreme, so I'm not doing anything funny. Wow. You can see that every single ace has vanished from the deck, right? Yeah. Now, I will try this. <laughs> I want this to be extremely clear. If I wave my hand over the pack, then it will make them reappear. Watch, kind of one, two, three. Not just one, we snap, we get one, two, three, and four. What in the world? This is happening. Stop. It's cool, right? <laughs> thanks so much, man. Thank Thank you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to follow us on all your socials and look out for a new episode next Wednesday featuring the man himself, Nick LaCapo. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>